Okay, so this video is to show you how to do the second level of DC mesh equations. Again, it's usually a good idea to start with an example. And what's going to be new here is having current sources on the second level. Um, that introduces a new thing called a current constraint equation, because the current sources basically fix one or more of the mesh currents. In this case, it's an exterior current source that's shared only with the reference mesh, the outer mesh. And so therefore, um, which we define its current basically as being zero, it's not even shown here. And uh, therefore, I2 is just equal to 5 amps. That's a very simple equation. Then we also have KVL equations, which were similar to what we had on level one. Um, there's now three of them. Um, we cannot, however, write a KVL equation for mesh two. So why is that? Well, we could easily find the voltage drop across a voltage source. That's just the value of the source. We could find the voltage drop across a resistor using Ohm's law. But what we can't do is to find the voltage across a current source. Because remember, just like the uh, current through a voltage source, the voltage across a current source is whatever it needs to be. And it's not the value that's specified by the value of the source. So 5 amps doesn't mean, of course, 5 volts. It means 5 amps. So we don't know the voltage there, and therefore we cannot write an equation, um, a KVL equation for this loop, because we simply don't know the value of that voltage source until we're done solving the problem. So on the other hand, the constraint equation takes the place of the KVL equation for that mesh. So that's why we have that. Then we now have a couple of SOT variables, the I0, that's just basically going to be related to a mesh current, so that's quite simple. It's just opposite to I4. Um, it is the current of a voltage source, but the current of a voltage source is actually easy to calculate in mesh analysis, um, unlike in nodal analysis where it's harder to find. Um, then we have the dissipated power in the 5 ohm resistor, and again that's just going to use the standard I squared R type uh, formula. And in this case there's just one non-reference current going through that resistor, and so it's just I4 squared times 5 ohms. So that's all fairly straightforward. So let's actually do, and of course, as I said, you can see the voltage drops highlighted here, if that helps you understand the KVL equations. And there's also a thing here to explain constraint equations to you um, that are current constraint equations, so that's available um, since that's a new thing at this level. Um, and you can also get details on the KVL equations if you like that, so you just click that to get that. Okay, and then um, that's the original problem and the solution. So now let's do um, a, an actual problem at the medium level. So here we've sort of automatically chosen the reference mesh to be the outer mesh, the path around the outside of the circuit. So um, it's not asking you to select that reference mesh, although we could do that, but we're not doing that here. Okay, so we need to decide what equations to write. Let's start with the simplest ones, which would be the current strain equa constraint equations. Um, and then I'll probably also these uh, sought variable equations. So let's do current constraint equations. So we have to do that for each current source basically constrains the current through that source. That's what a current source does. It fixes the current going through the source. So here there's only one non-reference current going through the one amp source. So that would just be I1. And that will equal then this fixed value of one amp. Now, on the other hand, we actually need a minus sign because I1 is going opposite to the direction of the current source. So this actually needs to be a minus sign to make that correct. And of course, you could put the minus sign over here if you wanted, or you can put it inside this text box, but you have to have a minus, one minus sign someplace. Okay, so now it's giving us a hint as to what we need to do. Um, and let's do the SOT variable equations next. So let's do the SOT branch current. And that's pretty easy usually in mesh analysis. So I0 is going to be equal to what? Well, I0 is here. It's the current down to that voltage source. Now, generally, of course, you don't know the current through a voltage source. It's whatever it needs to be. But in this case, it's just fixed by the value of that mesh current. So um, since the reference mesh current is zero, um, the outer mesh current, that is. So um, that's pretty easy. So I0 is just equal to I3. So we just put that in there. And it has a plus sign because they're going in the same direction. So that's correct. And then the other SOT variable is the power dissipated in the 5 ohm resistor. So let's choose SOT branch power. And it's going to remind us that we have three pallets of terms here. And so the power of the 5 ohm resistor 
equals to what? Well, 5 ohm resistor actually has two mesh currents flowing through it in opposite directions. The I4 is going up and the I2 is going down. So we're going to need a difference of currents to get the net current in either direction. It doesn't really matter for this because it's squared um, times the 5 ohm resistor. So we'll put in the 5 ohms there. And then the two currents in question are I4 and I2. And I'm not going to really worry about which one is which because the difference is squared, so it doesn't matter. And I'll check that equation. And that is correct. So now we're going to tackle the little bit more complicated equations, which are the KVL equations. So I usually like to recommend you do those last in case you then end up making mistakes on the easier ones um, that would invalidate the work you did on KVL. Okay, so let's look at mesh one. Well, that's a problem because we don't know the voltage across a current source. It's whatever it needs to be. Therefore, we can't write a KVL equation for mesh one. So we simply don't. We instead use this current constraint equation. So now let's look at mesh two and say, well, we're good there because there are no current sources in the path around mesh two. So this first resistor has a difference in mesh currents. The uh, voltage source is just a value of the source. And then this third resistor here is also a difference in mesh currents. So that would be like that equals to zero. And again, we're using Ohm's law to find these. Ohm's law is, of course, crucial to everything involving resistors. OK, so let's first of all, um, I'm going to start in the lower left corner and go clockwise. And so the voltage drop starting here, this is the plus, this is the minus. It's going to be the I2, the current going in minus the I1, which is the current going the opposite direction. So that's the net current going up, which is consistent with the idea of a voltage drop. And then that will be multiplied by the 4 ohm value. Now the next voltage drop, well, that's actually 3 volts, because this is, in fact, a voltage drop. It goes from plus to minus. So that is really a drop. So that's going to have a plus sign there. Then the voltage drop here, this is going to be our plus and our minus, because we're looking at voltage drops while going clockwise. So the current going into the positive side of that resistor is I2. And the current um, going in the opposite direction is I4. And then, of course, the resistance value is 5 ohms. Remember, the label is gray only because we're looking for the power of that resistor, but that's not relevant here. OK, so that is our first KVL equation. Now let's look at mesh 3. Well, we can do that one also, so let's do that. So um, let's start in the lower left hand corner. We're going to need a uh, difference of mesh currents times the resistance. We need a voltage value for this one. And then we need a single mesh current uh, or single non-reference mesh current for this one. And then that's going to be equal to 0. So we'll pick the terms. And now I'll go fill them out. And as always, I, I use the tab key here to go through and easily fill out these fields. So the first thing, if I start in the lower left corner, as I usually do, going clockwise, um, I need the current going into the 1 ohm. If I take this to be plus and minus, my voltage drop, I need the current going in there, which is I3. And then I subtract the current going the other way, which is the I, I'm sorry, I4, not I1. And then that's going to multiply the 1 ohm. Then the next thing here, this voltage drop, well, that's actually not a drop. It's a rise going in the clockwise direction because this is minus and this is plus. So that's actually going up by 5 volts. So I need to put a minus sign there to get the drop. And finally, the voltage drop through the 7 ohm going from right to left to complete the circuit is going to be I3 times 7 ohms. And remember that the current for the mesh we're writing this for is always going to appear with a plus sign if you do things consistently, like I've done here. Um, and that allows us to check the polarities, except on the voltage sources. Those we have to check separately. OK, and finally, we need to do mesh 4. And so we're going to have, uh, again, a difference in mesh currents times our resistance. We have a single mesh current there and then another difference. And that's going to equal to 0. So I'll start in the lower left-hand corner. Again, go clockwise, as always, in the direction of my mesh currents. Um, so again, imagine this is a plus, this is the minus. So that's I4 going in and I2 coming out. So we have I4 minus I2 times the 5 ohms. And then the next one, uh, plus here and minus there, I4 goes into the plus side. So that's going to be I4 times 3 ohms is the next voltage drop. 
And finally, the voltage drop across the 1 ohm will be the I4 going in that direction minus the I3 going in the other direction um, to give me the net current going to the left, and that times the 1 ohm. So that will give me the voltage drop plus and minus so that I sum the voltage drops around that loop, and that will again be correct. So now I'm basically done. I can see that I've completed everything here, so I get no more equations. And as always, I can see a detailed explanation like you would if it were an example here, and that's a good idea if you're not sure about one of the steps that you did. So that's it for level two.